What is up you guys? Today's video is going to be sort of a daily vlog. We've got several eBay orders going out. We've got some whatnot orders going out. We've got a whatnot show to prep for and we want to make a special announcement about a change of plans that we have going forward with our $20 flip house. So stay tuned for that. Oh, so we'll probably go ahead and do the eBay orders first, I think we have eight or nine going out today, and one of them is very good, like 150 bucks. First up, we have a pair of FootJoy golf shoes. We actually talked about these a couple videos ago. These are the black ones that we got uh, in our Laos, Laos last house flip video. We paid $6.50 for these, and they sold for $35 plus shipping. Anytime we sell shoes, we always use these free priority mail shoe boxes. You can get them for free from the post office or USPS.com. And they'll even send them straight to your house if you order them online. The only caveat with these is that you have to use them to ship priority mail. You can't use these for first class or FedEx or UPS or anything like that. I think Haley and Moe's are coming outside. Hello, Moe's. Hey, baby. Yeah, I missed you too. Yeah. Three pounds, 15 by eight by five, and it's gonna cost $9.59. But again, it was $35 plus shipping, so the buyer pays for shipping. This is just kind of a, a technicality. Basically, they pay you into your eBay account, and then you use your eBay account balance to buy the label. Hello, how's it going? Moses has been licking me for at least 30 seconds now. Next item going out is a little pair of baby Hirachis. Little tiny little kid shoes, here we go. These are actually part of our house flip budget. We got these at the Goodwill Bins a couple months ago. Uh, very lightweight, we probably paid 25 cents for them, got them cleaned up real nice, and they sold for $10 plus shipping. We're gonna weigh 10 ounces, and they are going to Kelly in Winter, Wisconsin. Kelly, I don't know if you're a viewer of the YouTube channel or not, but we appreciate the support. It's gonna cost us $5.04 to send this out to her, uh, and she paid like $6.25 in shipping. So we're actually gonna make a little bit of profit on shipping on this one. Next up is a wrestling shirt we've had listed on eBay for a while. Uh, I think it's in the eye bin, maybe? Maybe it's this one. Let's check. WWE SmackDown Undertaker youth size medium. I don't know, I have to open it up. Yeah, this is the right shirt. So we got this in a big uh, deal at the flea market when we bought a bunch of stuff out of this guy's van. Uh, I, we spent like $1,200 on everything, I think, but we got a ton of stuff. So I don't know exactly how much we have in this shirt, but it sold for $20 plus shipping. The buyer was all in $28.67. It's definitely first class, probably gonna cost four or five bucks to ship out. Excuse me. Seven ounces going to Kimberly from Decatur, Tennessee. And it's gonna cost us $4.09. Next up is over here in the K bin. We also get a lot of comments when we do videos like this. Like this next item is a sweater. It's uh, this mauve, I think it's a mauve, like American uh, Air Postal. We the, I don't know what it is, it's a sweater. And people are like, why is a sweater in the K bin? Why wouldn't a sweater be in the S bin? And it doesn't matter, like we don't do it based on what the item is. We just do it based on whatever bin we wanna put the item in. So like there's a field on eBay when you list an item called the custom SKU, and whatever you type in that field shows up when the item sells on eBay. So when we listed the sweater, we listed it, took pictures, put it in the bag, put it in the K bin, and then when we listed it on eBay, in the custom SKU field, we just typed K because it's in the K bin. So then when it sells, it pops up telling us the address to send it to and the custom SKU to pull it from, and that's how the whole custom SKU system works. This sweater sold for $15 plus shipping. The buyer paid it all in $22.30. Uh, it's gonna cost us $4.88 to send it out. I honestly don't remember where we got it from. We've had it for a while, I think. Uh, but we wouldn't have paid more than a couple bucks for it. Next item's in the D bin. It's actually a pretty good sale here. It's a hat that we've had listed for quite a while. This one. This one with the big cat on it. It's the Panthers. I think it's like a, a hockey team or something from Florida. Like the Florida Panthers. Florida Vintage Florida Panthers NHL snapback. Uh, and it sold for 75 bucks plus shipping. The buyer was all in $87. We picked this up. Uh, on an online wholesale deal from Tommy Pax. I think that's his name on Instagram. I'll link his Instagram here on the screen, but he's always got a ton of good stuff. We got like 25 hats and a couple t-shirts from him for $200. And obviously it was worth it because this one hat just sold for 75. All right, I'm turning my fan off. I realized that might've been buzzing in the video the whole time. It's just a little warm today. We often get asked how we ship hats. 
uh, and I would recommend shipping them in boxes. This is an eight by eight by six, which is a pretty good size for like these flat bill hats like this. If you have baseball style hats like the one I'm wearing, you could probably fit those in like an eight by six by four, but they're about the same cost as the eight by eight by six. So I would just go ahead and get these. You can also put the hat in a poly bag if you want to. I used to do that, but now we just put it in a box. Some people want to put it in a poly bag just in case the box gets wet, but I've never really had much of an issue with that. And it seems like a waste of a poly bag to me personally, but you can do whatever you want. This is going to weigh nine ounces, eight by eight by six box. And it's going to cost us $4.00 and 81 cents to ship it to Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Second to last sale here is another $75 sale. It's a pair of Air Jordan 1s, I believe. We got these from my man dealing with Dalton over on Whatnot. Haley, do you remember what we paid for these? Um, I think I was trying to support them, maybe like 90 to 100, well, I don't know. I don't know, we don't used know. Whatnot credit, so we didn't. all we had to pay for was shipping. So technically we paid like, 10 or 11 dollars for these and they sold for 75 bucks plus shipping the buyer was all in 94 dollars and 11 cents it's one of my favorite things about whatnot like it for every time you guys sign up we get a credit on whatnot as well as cash to cash out uh, and we use that credit to support our friends that also sell on whatnot so like whatever we paid for these shoes like we got a pretty decent deal from dalton he got his money from i'm sure he paid 10 or 15 dollars for them at a thrift store uh, we didn't pay anything out of pocket because we just used our credit and now we sold them on eBay and made our profit. So it's like the beautiful circle of life. I just realized that these have to go through eBay's authenticity guarantee program, which I get, I get it. Like it's cool. But the bad part about that is that they force you to ship it via FedEx. I don't know why, like, even though we put USPS on the, on the package, anytime it goes through the authenticity program, it forces you to use FedEx, which it's not a huge deal. Now I have to put them in a different box because like I said earlier, we can't use priority to ship FedEx or EPS. But um, my friend Karen, Lavender Clothesline, just posted on Instagram today about how annoying it is because she lives in a relatively small town and like the closest FedEx drop up, drop out place, drop off place is like 45 minutes from her house. And you literally, the only other option is just to pay out of pocket to ship it there via UPS. And eBay, if you do that, eBay doesn't refund the buyer for the shipping that they paid to get it to the authenticity program. It's just a huge mess. I know it's probably sounded complicated, but it's annoying. eBay, if you're watching this, stop it. Just let us use USPS. And our last eBay item of the day, the $150 sale is this pair of Reebok Gore-Tex shoes. We picked these up at the flea market. Haley thinks we paid $100 for them, but I don't think we would have paid that much. I'm pretty sure we paid like 60. It was a long time ago. Like, I don't know, what, like four or five months ago, Haley? So I think we paid 60. We had them listed for $250 for the longest time because they're like Reebok sample shoes or something. Very hard to find, uh, very hard to put a value on. But as you can see, new with tags. And we finally got someone interested. I think they offered like 150 maybe. And instead of countering, I just accepted it. So turning 60 bucks, I believe, into $150. I also think the buyer was international because they paid a total of $194 and 94 cents. So between these seven orders, we had $493.92 in gross sales. We have to take out 61.74 for eBay fees. We have to take out $70.12 for sales tax. Uh, this mainly came in with that international order. They paid like $42 in a VAT tax. So basically that shows up in our gross revenue, but we back it right back out to pay it right back to eBay. Uh, so the 70 12 for that, we got $38 for total shipping cost. Uh, and we have a total of roughly $90 for cost of goods. Like I said, a couple things I'm not 100% sure how much we paid, but roughly 90 bucks sounds about right. Leaving us with a total net profit on the sales of $234.06. We do have to pay uh, income taxes out of that amount, which basically we set aside about 20% of that uh, for that purpose, but still leaves us with a nice little profit for, um, you know, seven or eight sales. And I know we've been selling a lot on whatnot lately, but we still do sell on eBay. We've got a 90 day total of 11,397 85 and the fact that we're holding mainly the, the higher end stuff to sell on eBay nowadays makes it to where our average selling price on eBay is a lot higher. So if we take 11,397.85 divided by 231, which is the number of items we've sold, we get an average sales price of $49.34, which I believe is the highest it's ever been. Over the last couple of years, we've usually sat around $25 to $30 or so, but since a lot of our lower value items are going to whatnot, that makes naturally makes our ebay average selling price a little bit higher Haley's gonna follow me up here we got all the packages in her car we're gonna drop those off we have this like store in a shopping center near our house that's like a ship and print solutions place so they do all this printing and 
shipping. <laughs> and they're also like an authorized acceptance place of FedEx, UPS, and USPS. Uh, and they're like a privately owned thing. So generally they're gonna be a lot nicer than postal employees, generally, uh, and they're super helpful. So we're gonna take all of our packages there and we have to take my car into the shop today because as you can see, I got a check engine light, a low tire pressure light, and a traction off light on. So I don't know what all this is, but we gotta get that taken care of. So this store is Mavis Tires and Brakes. And this store back here is called Bow Tire. Now the story is there used to be a very successful chain of tire places called Frank's Discount Tire. We had been using them for, for years. Uh, and Frank, the owner of Frank's Discount Tires, finally sold out to Mavis. So Mavis took over all of his locations uh, and gave him a five-year non-compete where he couldn't open up any other you know, competing tire shops for that amount of time. And then once his five years was over, he opened up Bow Tire and started building them right next to all the Mavises. So, I guess legally he's not doing anything wrong. He did wait until his uh, non-compete was over, but it does seem kind of, kind of, yeah, it does seem a little weird to me, but drop a comment and let me know. Did he do anything wrong? Would you have done that? What do you guys think? It's a weird situation, but I guess it's legal. So I just picked my car up from the shop. It had been up there about four or five hours or so. It took him a while to get around to it. They said the check engine light had to do with some evaporation something about gasket tubing and something like that so it was super easy they just fixed it cleared the code that should be good to go they also did a tire rotation and oil change and my total cost was 268 dollars and 95 cents uh i'm curious to see how much it cost for you guys in other parts of the country i'm in south carolina and just the oil change was 96 dollars it was i think six six quarts of synthetic oil with an oil filter and they also replaced the actual oil gasket i guess that was worn out for a while so let me know is that normal how much are you guys paying for oil changes where you are so Haley has spent her afternoon uh listing all this stuff in uh for tonight's whatnot show it's going to be for the house flip budget so it's stuff from previous episodes we got the blankets from like three episodes ago the psp from our last episode we got this winnie the pooh i don't know if you guys Remember, he's from like five or six episodes ago. We found him at the bins and he was absolutely filthy. Uh, but we put him in the washing machine and he works. And what you seen, Piglet? he still talks. All I did was take the batteries out and he came out super clean. So we're excited to see how much he goes for that torrid tie dye shirt and everything on that rack over there. I think our current house budget is only like 200 bucks or something. So we're getting pretty low. Yeah, we haven't sold in a while, which yeah, is why. <laughs> having an auction. So we've got a uh, 60. 59 things in tonight's auction. Uh, so we'll see how we come out. So all in all, it took us about an hour and a half or so to get through this entire auction of all 59 things. And we did three or four giveaways on top of that. We do start everything out at just a dollar and run it for 30 seconds. But if people are still bidding on your items after the timer is over, whatnot will automatically add another you know, eight, 10 or 12 seconds to the clock just to allow more bids to come in if there's still interest in that item. Whatnot has been a, an absolute game changer for our business. I mean, having the ability to sell 59 things in an hour and a half is just absolutely amazing. Uh, and it's really fun too. I mean, whatnot's basically like the QVC of the modern day. I mean, get in front of the camera and just interacting with your audience and being a good salesman, that's how you're able to get maybe eight, 10, $12 for an item maybe worth $5 on eBay. So those small items that sell for a little bit more than they're actually worth help us with the larger items that sell for a little bit less than they're actually worth. And at the end of the day, it all balances out and we just absolutely love whatnot. This auction was wildly successful and it was a ton of fun too. Uh, we had some smaller sales like always, so like some uh, Nike dry fit shorts sold for $4. We had the Under Armour pants that were like Dwayne The Rock Johnson uh, version. Those sold for 31, that was pretty good. Uh, 17 bucks for an altered state Georgia sweater. Uh, some really nice sales. We had the PSP that we got in the last video. That one sold for $116 to BlinkFan169. That was very generous of him. Uh, and also the butterfly wings. I'm gonna click on it so you guys can see these. They're literally just like, you just put them on your shoulders and it's just like a fun like kids thing. I thought we'd get 10 or $15 for them, but they sold for 56 dollars. So thank well, you so you much. Moe's wore them, so they were they famous. They were famous, of yeah, Mo's. famous. Famous butterfly wings, but C. Bratchford, a new buyer, never purchased anything from us from whatnot, uh, and they bought the butterfly wings and the Tinkerbell quilt for 39 bucks. Uh, and then we also, I think that was it. Everything else is like pretty, pretty normal. Um, I think that baby blanket sold for $39. That you oh bought. yeah, the one with the um, I don't have the picture on there, but it had like the 
the watercolor animals uh, with the alphabet that 39 bucks on that the 511 tactical vest that Haley found sold for 25 bucks uh, so lots of good sales lots of normal sales everything balances out and we did a total gross revenue of 1213 dollars uh, i won't know exactly how much we earned until we actually get everything shipped and it takes out everything but usually whatnot fees are about 11 and a half percent so we will update you tomorrow once we get all this stuff shipped so it's the very next day our helper kim came over this morning and she got all of our whatnot stuff from yesterday's show shipped out and now that it's shipped we can see exactly how much money we made which was $1,017.62. That was for the house flip budget, so that's gonna come in very handy. We've been trying to like batch film videos lately, so we've been filming like three or four videos over the last week, and I think we're almost caught up on things that we bought for the house and haven't actually sold yet. So Kim went ahead and set up another whatnot auction for today in like an hour and 20 minutes, and we have, I think, 25 things, some clothing, if you guys remember that, um, jacket from previous videos a couple of the blankets we got from the bins a couple videos ago the bubba gump strip hoodie all this stuff will be sold today and then i think we'll be be at a good point it does get i don't know kind of overwhelming when we're trying to film a bunch of videos at the same time because we're going to mexico next week we're going to atlanta tomorrow and anytime we travel like that we try to get things situated before we leave so we don't want to come back from vacation and then feel behind and have to immediately start working again but that means the weeks right before vacation are always incredibly incredibly busy i would love to get to a point where we're like two to three weeks ahead on videos constantly that way if we want to go on vacation we don't have to work super hard just a little bit harder uh, and anything if anything ever comes up and we have to take like an emergency trip somewhere we're not behind on videos so it is a fantastic job that we have i don't ever want to come off as ungrateful because i know what we have going on is extremely special and we're incredibly thankful for you guys that help us do this um, but it does get kind of stressful sometimes like <laughs> i'm looking at this pile of junk here i really just need to sit down and go through it and see what needs to get redonated what any needs to go to the dump uh, and what needs to get organized and sold on either whatnot or ebay usually once every couple months i go through these spurts where i just get overwhelmed at the amount of stuff we have in this warehouse the warehouse is like 1460 square feet and when we moved into the house we were so excited because we had so much space i mean our previous house in the garage space we were working at was like 300 square feet so it's so much bigger than what we had previously but we have still found a way to fill up nearly every nook and cranny of this place we just buy a ton of stuff we're at a point right now with the youtube channel where a lot of our content is just buying we don't really show the selling process as much as we used to uh, so that kind of gives us you know a reason to, to go thrifting when we don't need stuff or go to the flea market when we have plenty of stuff to list uh, and then we have whatnot and when that makes it seem less stressful because i'm like well yeah we have a lot of stuff but we could just do a quick whatnot auction sell 40 50 60 items in an hour and a half and you know move all that stuff out but we still have days like today where i just want to go through and just purge things just send stuff to the thrift store send stuff to the dump just whatever we got to do to get it out of our lives and after we do stuff like this it feels great so if you got a bunch of stuff sitting around in your garage or wherever you work just get rid of it i promise you'll feel better and that's a little bit better i didn't really organize anything on the shelf i didn't really do anything over here but at least this floor space is available now i basically made three separate piles this is stuff that we're going to sell it just needs to be washed this is stuff i want to redonate to a thrift store and this is all stuff that's just going to get thrown in the garbage it's just you know something's wrong with it it's just not worth redonating and then everything actually on the shelf is should be ready to list maybe it needs a little bit of cleaning or something like that but everything over here will be sold eventually when we first moved into this warehouse the original idea was to have this shelving area be for like raw goods things that are just coming in from the thrift store flea market whatever and we haven't looked at them yet and as we pull them off of here they go to this table which was supposed to be our prep table where we get things cleaned and you know check for any issues or whatever and once it makes it through here it goes to this shelf which is everything ready to be listed on ebay at least it should be everything ready to be listed on ebay right now it's just an amalgam of random things from here it gets pulled over here to the photo station which is pretty cool we've got these great video maker lights a light up here and it's on a standing desk so you can sit while you list or you can stand oops lights caught on the edge or you can stand usually we sit but it's pretty cool it's just got like some gray wood it was actually just a piece of wood we had that was in the warehouse when we moved in i think it was left over from the gym area over there uh use that as a backdrop and then from here 
Uh, this is just for hard goods and shoes and stuff. Then over here we have a raw wood area for flat lay clothing. And then once everything is photographed, we put it in bags and put it over here in our inventory storage area. And then from here, it gets pulled to our packing area over there to get packed and shipped out. So it's like a nice flow, like in a C shape all throughout the warehouse. But over the last year or so, things haven't really worked out exactly as planned, as you can see. So fast forward a little bit, we did our second whatnot auction of the video today. It was a total of 29 things. Uh, well, 28, I think we did 28 things in one giveaway. Uh, we had a total gross revenue of 356 dollars and this one we did it at like three o'clock in the afternoon so the prices were a little bit more like reasonable for things like we had a nike hood that sold for 17 bucks we had a uh, polo ralph lauren shirt that sold for six bucks we had this person spent 20 dollars. they won that purse for free and then they got a uh, camo t-shirt and a deer blanket for like 20 bucks total so everything was very reasonable uh, and it came out to 356 before fees again whatnot charges around 11 and a half percent uh so whatever that ends up being we'll add that to our total for the house budget so i'm not 100 percent sure what our current budget for the house reno is but whatever it is we have to back out 606 dollars because i just spent that much money with shipping on these two boxes of funko pops it was 500 dollars for the funko pops and then i spent 106 dollars getting it shipped pretty much all the way across the country these are mostly like Disney and some Marvel. We got My Hero Academia. We've got a, an office right here, Dwight Street. Hey King. Uh, so a little bit of everything. Pop culture, like really recognizable characters, and uh, Funko Pops just do really well over on Whatnot. That's actually originally what Whatnot. Sorry, stuff on bubble wrap. That's actually originally what Whatnot was created for. It was a marketplace specifically for Funko Pops, and they've slowly added the other categories as we go. So I've got a little bit less than $5 into each Funko Pop because it's 105 individual pops for 500 bucks, not including shipping. So I guess if you include shipping, it's a little bit more than $5, but I'm hoping we can sell all of these in one Whatnot auction and roughly double our money. I think we could probably get 10 to $12 for each one of these plus shipping. Some of them might do a little bit Better than that, some do, some might do a little bit worse, but overall, historically, Funko Pops have been extremely easy for us to sell, uh, so I, I feel good about this. Hey look everybody, it's Haley. Her first appearance in, <laughs> in today's video. She's been hard at work doing some other- I've been other... editing other videos and working on a lot of stuff. Yeah, we've both been trying to get ahead. We're actually at our church right now on Tuesday nights. We come to play pickleball with some folks. Figured I'd put in some clips. You can grab my paddle. I'll put it on the hood of the car for you. I didn't see that. I guess I'll go get your paddle. Put it right here. I don't know why she didn't see it. There you go. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Did you tell them that you got me a new paddle? I did not tell them that. But yeah, Josh is surprising me with a new paddle. It's gonna be here tomorrow though. That's the first one I got for like Christmas or my birthday or something. It's not terrible, but Haley's the only person in our group that doesn't have a newish pickleball paddle. So I just went ahead and bought her it. I'm gonna try to hold the GoPro and play at the same time. It's not working so far. <laughs> Six, four, one. Bam. 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 Right into the net. She's got it. Here we go. Oh, woo Good game, Haley. Let's run and bounce off each other like they do in the niffle. Okay, let's do it. No, I'm <laughs> So we are on the way home from pickleball. It was a, it, just a vigorating exercise. Don't mind my hair. Don't mind our hair. Both of our hairs are messed up. But check out that lake. That's This is uh, Lake Murray. We cross it every day. Go into uh, church and the flip house, all that kind of stuff. It's very beautiful. Hello and welcome to day three of this daily vlog that was supposed to be filmed over the course of just one singular day. I've just been filming like little snippets from each day, putting it together in a video. I don't know how the video is going to turn out, but if you're still watching at this point, I feel like you've probably enjoyed it. Uh, so if you guys could hit the like button down below, that would be really cool. Also, we're fairly close to 400,000 subscribers. I think at the time of filming this video, we're at like 367,000. Um, and to be honest with you, this past year on YouTube, we've we've grown, we've had steady growth, but it's been slower than it has in the past. Back in uh, 2020, 2021, we had several months when we were getting 20 to 30,000 new subscribers a month. And over the last year, we've gotten like three to 5,000 per month. Um, so if you guys are watching right now and you haven't yet, uh, please subscribe to the channel, that'd be awesome. Once we hit 400,000, I'll probably do some giveaway or something, maybe like 
I don't know, like $1,000 in cash to help you start your reselling business or buy an Xbox, whatever you want. I feel like that would be a good milestone to do a cool giveaway. So subscribe, that would be cool. Love you so much. So today we are actually headed to Atlanta, Georgia to make a big wholesale purchase of inventory. It's the largest purchase we've ever made for our business. Really excited about that. I don't wanna get into too many details because that's gonna be its own video, but I'm headed to the bank to get cash for that. I'm headed to the gas station to get some gas and I also need to vacuum out the car a little bit, make some room. We're gonna take our trailer uh, and hopefully all the inventory can fit on the trailer and in the back of the car here. I was on Instagram yesterday and I saw this guy, I think his name's J6 Flips. I don't know his actual name, but we've just been Instagram friends for a while. And he started using List Perfectly yesterday. He'd been on the fence about it for a while. And he finally signed up and started cross posting uh, all of his items from eBay to Mercari and Depop, Poshmark, stuff like that. And he made several sales the first day on Mercari and I think one or two on Depop. Uh, and it was just interesting to see someone still having success with that. To be completely honest with you guys, we still use List Perfectly to list on eBay, but we don't cross post anything anymore just because we have whatnot now and it's just easier than cross posting. But if you do want to get into cross posting, I would highly recommend using it list perfectly. The people behind the platform are very kind and just genuine individuals that truly care about the company uh, and the business itself, like the product of List Perfectly is just really solid, makes it super easy to cross post. So I know cross posting in general is conflicting like some people like it some people don't but if you want to try it out for your business and make some sales and stuff that's been sitting on ebay for a while definitely try it out there's going to be a link down below uh, to click and you can use code tornado and that'll give you i think 30 percent off your first month list perfectly is going to be the sponsor of flipcon this year we just really appreciate them and all the support that they've given us over the years so we have this chain of car washes in our town called like frank's frank's car wash or something like that and I have a membership here. I think it's like $29 a month and you can get unlimited washes, like one, one per day as much as you want. And I usually get maybe two or three per month, but one wash without the membership is like $18. So as long as you get at least two, you end up coming out a little bit better. But I've also noticed that they have been building so many car washes lately, like around every corner on every block, there either is a newly built car wash or there's one under construction. And I don't know if that's just something in our area or something nationwide, like people are just getting into the whole car wash craze. But, pulling into the car wash and I forgot that my back window was rolled down and shout out the attendant for catching that or else I would have had some water back here. But obviously if they're building all these new car washes, they are probably doing it with a loan and a bank had to approve the loan. So apparently they see some sort of demand for this many car washes in the area and i imagine most of them are going to go on the subscription based model a lot of businesses are moving to subscriptions nowadays it's just interesting to see how the economy changes and ebbs and flows with the times i just sucked up one of my GoPro screws. So obviously I picked up Haley and Mose is back there. I don't know if you guys can see him. He's Mose, right there. Mose, can you say He's hello? He's looking out the window. There, there he is. is. <laughs> okay, back up. That's not safe. Mose is going to his grandma's house today, <laughs> Haley's mom's house, because we're going to Atlanta. So it's time to end today's video and start the Atlanta video. But at the beginning of today's video, I said that we had an important announcement to make about our $20 flip house, a little change of plans, mm -hmm. so to say. And we've been talking about it being a rental property for a while. Uh, a couple of people asked if we were gonna flip it and just you know, sell it and make money or rent it out or whatever. Um, but after some deliberation and running through some ideas, I think what we're gonna do is turn it into an Airbnb. Uh, our area, the area that the house is in, is not super touristy, but I think it would be cool with our YouTube audience, like you guys could watch us refurbish, you know, the whole house and mm -hmm. furnish and everything. And then if you're ever in the area, you wanna come thrifting where, where we thrift, stuff like that, you can stay at our Airbnb. So, it makes the series longer as well, because we'll yeah. be able to thrift furniture and decor and all kinds of stuff and make it look really cool. Yeah, it'll be a $20 flip thrift house that yeah. people could come stay in right. so and if it doesn't work like if we do airbnb for airbnb for six months or 12 months or something and it ends up not working uh we can always rent it like that's still going to be an option or later sell. on or sell it yeah you never know so that's the plan going forward very excited about that yeah. uh it's not going to be ready anytime soon i think it's probably going to take us at least the rest of this year to finish mm -hmm. everything all the work and the furnishing and um and all the regulations i guess that go along to right. making an airbnb but we're very excited so thank you so much for watching today's video if you guys enjoyed it hit the like button down below if you haven't already hit the subscribe button down below as 
Well, thank you again for watching the best. We will catch you on the, on the next, next one. one.